So, Q&A time. Hang on. <clears throat> right. So, you know who I am. You know what I do. Let's cut to the chase. The question that was asked most often in this Q&A, not surprisingly, was Where are you from? Where do you live? How good is your Portuguese? It's really good, by the way. Where did you learn it? How do you know so many Brazilian jokes and speak Portuguese so well? By the way, I'm from Brazil, so I'm one of the five fellas that understood those jokes. Are you a Brazilian? I guess you're Portuguese? I am Brazilian, yes. As I've stated many times, I think I'm among the series and kind of made references to. Um, the fact where I know a lot of Portuguese because, well, I was raised on Portuguese and I learned in school with my parents and I know a lot of Brazilian jokes because uh, being Brazilian I know, I know a lot of Brazilian pop culture so it's really all of, all interconnected On a scale of Bottas to 10, rate the 2016 F1 season so far Hmm... I'd probably give it a solid prost because so far it's been actually very good and I and I kind of can't wait until the next race comes so that, so that I can watch it and then, then make the episode about it because really, it's been the best thing about it, making so many great episodes about this season compared to the last one where it's it's the, where, where, it, where it pales in comparison. What has been your most fun video to record? Australia 1991, which was the one where I made the poems and made everything rhyme, um, because it actually has one of the funniest jokes I think that I've made until now, which was the um, we're no more the officials um, were dropped on, were dropped on their heads as babies. <laughs> I think this. It still kind of cracks me up until now. It cracked me up until then, back then and until now. Best race at Caesar's Palace. Do you think it's possible next year that Ferrari and Red Bull will catch up with Mercedes and then we have a six-way fight? Red Bull, possibly, because they because if, if Renault plays their cards right, and I know that Red Bull will definitely will because they have always had great chassis, especially with Adrian Newey. I'm not sure if Adrian Newey is staying next year, but still. I think we can have a four-way fight with Red Bull, but Ferrari, despite me being a Ferrari fan, I don't don't really put a lot of trust in them, because last year we, we hoped that, that Vettel would take it up to the Mercedes, and he did a few times, but right now it doesn't look so promising, and why should we really get ourselves hyped for next year? It's really no use. Hopefully I can get two questions in. What defunct F1 team from the past would you want to see come back, besides McLaren? Um, you're implying that McLaren is defunct there, so you might want to check the grammar. Just, but that's just being me being pedantic. Mm. No, it's kind of a toss-up, because I don't really think there, there's one single team that I would like to see back. I mean, there's Minardi, which made good coffee. Mm. There was Jordan, with all the yellow cars and the buzzing hornets, and... Uh, I think, I think it was the, the Bitten Hisses, that was the best one with the, with the Cobra on the front. And also Benetton, Benetton was also a pretty good name. Well, they're back to being Renault now, they were Lotus. They were never really away, but the Benetton name has left, so... I think that, that would be pretty cool to see back in the grid. So it's really not one, but I have multiple reading. Any thoughts and opinions on NBCSN commentators? Never really watched those. Um, I, mean, I mean, I know there's David Hobbs, I think, one of, the, one of them. I don't know the, the name of the other one. Or maybe there's three, I don't know. I know there's Will Bucks and Daryl as a pit reporter, but yeah, I haven't, I don't really know them, so I can't really say much about them. But fun fact, last year I was planning to do the 2015 USA episode with the NBC commentary, but I couldn't find anyone that had it. However, this year I found someone that actually, that's actually putting the races with the NBC commentary up for download, so keep an eye out for that, possibly. In your opinion, who will win out of a fight between a shark and a hippopotamus? Hippopotamus, of course. I mean, have you seen the jaws in that thing? Jesus Christ, that's huge. Even if sh even if the shark can get the end of biting, I don't think it's gonna be enough to actually take out the hippopotamus. So my money will be on the hippo. Alonso third world title or manner dominating? I think we'll see Rio Harriento actually get driver of the day before we see Alonso get the third world title. Would you rather get a tattoo written F O M or spend the rest of your life agreeing to everything the Sky Sports pundits say about Lewis? If I got an F O M tattoo, I wouldn't be allowed to leave the house, so I would probably just take everything that Sky Sports says with to heart. Senna won the 1983 British F3 Championship before making the jump to F1. After a season with total money, he jumped to the more competitive Lotus team, winning the second race of the year in Portugal. You seriously want me to read all this? Are you just trying to make fun of the fact that I can't speak? Do you think Helmut Marko's comparison of Max to Ayrton is partially valid, considering that Verstappen did finish third in his first and only Formula 3 championship, he started with Toro Rosso, a pretty low-key team, then unfairly admit, because Kvyat is the man, went to a more dominant team to reach his potential? I guess? 
because maybe it's it's kind of following the same timeline of Senna's career, possibly 10 years younger only. But really, team bosses say a lot of stuff, so... Eh. Are you a fan of MMA? I prefer my fighting fake and my RKO's out of nowhere, so I prefer wrestling. What is your favorite historical F1 team and why is it BRM? For those who don't know why that person asked that question, I'm with Joey on this Model F1 Fantasy League, and I'm part of the BRM team where I was making... Well, was because the season's kind of about to end, uh, making these do me documentary videos about the history of BRM throughout the countries and the calendar. So if you'd like to check that out, it would be pretty cool. You could see more of me and and also hear me speaking seriously for once. What has been your favorite Formula One season to date? Um, I don't know if you mean to date as in the ones that I've watched in my lifetime or the ones or any of them. So I'm just gonna go with both. In my lifetime, would possibly be 2000... maybe 2008? <laughs> I know it was, this, is, this is kind of a weird answer, but I, I don't actually remember a full season from the, um, from the mid-2000s that I watched. Uh, the one that I remember the best is 2008, with... Um, I still do remember Kimi Raikkonen retiring on Australia and all the stuff that happened later on in Singapore, in Italy, in Brazil, and such. So, possibly, yeah, that one was, that was, was my favorite, but it might be replaced with this year's, who knows? We'll have to wait until the end. But overall, my true favorite season was 1991, as I stated in the Brazil 1991 episode. Because it was full of attrition, it was Senna winning his third title, you could see Williams were catching up by the end of the season, and it was basically just a prelude to 1992, and you can you can really see it when if you look for it. Who is your favorite numbers in an F1 driver? Max Verstappen. Duh. No, but really, it's Max Verstappen currently. But overall, it's Alan Prost. I love your series. Needed to pick me up after a history lesson on the Holocaust. What is the prettiest F1 car, both in your series and of all time? And why is it the Tyrrell P34? I think you mean the Tyrrell 001. Bitch, please, Brabham BT55. Have you seen how slick that thing looks? Just look at it. Adrian Dewey just completely pales in comparison to Gordon Murray. How many languages do you actually speak? I speak Portuguese fluently because it's my native language. I speak English fluently because it's my... Uh, my native. <laughs> because I learned it since I was little. Since I'm about around four. Sounds weird and might call me autistic or nerd. Probably close to either. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the other languages that I've spoken like Germany, German, Japanese and Italian, Spanish, they were mostly using the translator. So yeah, I cheated on those ones. Can I please, please, PLEASE use the forklift song from 2015 Spanish Grand Prix as my ringtone? Sure you can, I'll put a download link down below. How long do you spend making an episode? Must be a couple of days I reckon. Gathering the footage, script, voiceover and montage. I appreciate the effort. Uh, the footage is probably the easiest part, but it just depends on how many trackers the torrent has. So after that gets out of the way, I put it on Premiere and just watch it. And I mark down all the parts that I need, but I write it. I've shown this before. Write it on stuff like this. Yes, I use my handwriting because it's mostly because I just like handwriting. It's I find it kind of a dead art, sort of, and I just enjoy doing it. After the script is done, I do the voiceovers, which took take around like the day after, take around depending on the length of the episode from two hours or possibly longer, but usually it's an average of two hours to get everything done. And the montage, the editing, I've, I've improved over the year that I've been making the show, so in the past it would probably take around four hours or so, but right now I've streamlined the process and taking all the markers from Premiere, I can cut it down to around two hours, so it makes it very much quicker and very much enjoyable. Very much more enjoyable, I mean. Where did you get the full race of this? I've been trying to find it, but I can't. Well, this wasn't the Australian 1991 episode, actually, so... But I thought it was fitting to, ask, to answer it here as well. I have this torrent downloaded from the F1 subreddit, where this guy keeps a full... Um, a copy of every full race, mostly full races at least, um, from the... Since the 1978 season until the most recent fall season, so in this case will be 2015. So that's where I get all the classic races from. I don't get them from YouTube, unfortunately. Um, you, Chris does get them from YouTube, and that's why he doesn't get um, FOM on his ass as much as I do. So, 
he's lucky. What's your favorite track? I don't know if you mean F1 or in general, but I'll answer both. In F1, it's Spa, and in general, it's a Nordschleife. Will Sanderson fulfill the prophecy and die? Maybe, once he's really old and of natural causes, hopefully? Will Prosberg win a World Drivers' Championship? Well, he has displayed a lot of performance in this year, so I don't see why we shouldn't place a little bit of hope on, on him right now. But let's wait until the mid-season see if he can keep it up. Who is your favorite driver to come out of the Red Bull Young Driver program other than Max? Possibly Vettel because all the others have kind of gone down the drain. Liuzzi and Speed have gone nowhere. Uh, Verne went up to Ferrari after he got sacked and Ricardo... Ricardo smiles and wins races sometimes but he's really... he's kind of been underperforming lately so not saying he's not good he's just not up to his full potential anymore but Vettel Vettel has been consistent ever since he been since being from Red Bull went into Ferrari, so Vettel, yes. Snog, Mary Avoid, Bad Wet Dead, or as I know it, fuck Mary Kill. James Allen, Ted Kravitz, David Croft. Duh, marry James Allen, fuck Ted Kravitz, and kill David Croft. You sound really similar to the Into the Barrier guy and a similar sense of humor too. Are you related? I don't think so. Not that I know of. But since you said that, we could probably try going after him, why not? Hey, mate. People seem to think we're related somehow. Wanna collab or something of the sort? Looking forward to it. Well, there we go. Let's see what he answers. What's your favorite F1 team and what is your best memory of F1? Also, where do you work? I don't know you well. Well, my favorite F1 team is Ferrari, obviously. I'm kind of a long, long life. <laughs> lifelong Ferrari fan ever since Mary Keller was in there and I basically liked them because McLaren blah, because <laughs> Mary Keller was in there. I think my best memory of F1 would possibly see to see uh, Mary Keller win again after so long in Valencia 2009 because Mary Keller is my favorite driver. It was just amazing seeing him win after what well, it was four years like no, not four, probably five years even. He won, He last won in 2004. So yeah, I went ecstatic on that day. That was beautiful. About workplace? <laughs> ah, work. <laughs> ah. You're funny, you know that? Why do you hate the Dutch angle so much? Uh, you know Battlefield Earth? The, the, the movie that was, that was the with the... Um, Scientology stuff and John Travolta. I joke about. I actually joked about it. This the first time there was a Dutch angle. I said like it felt. It felt like I was watching Battlefield Earth. It was back in Bahrain, 2015, and uh, it's really because of that. That movie made so many Dutch. Had so many Dutch angles. It kind of made me really dislike them. But when used right, they can do. They can do good. But the way that F1 uses it sometimes is just kind of jarring. There was this one time in Spain in the Spain race. Where they had a Dutch angle right on the on the Red Bull pit box, like the with the computers and stuff. It looked like I was in a tunnel. It felt a little claustro claustrophobic, even. It was it was very weird. Also, where are the bloopers? Those are usually my favorite part of these. It really depends on the episode. Well, first of all, they're not really bloopers. They're just a part that I pick from the episode that I can't make a joke about. But I do know a song that I can put them and make them funny. It's kind of like Cinema Sins does. So it really depends on the episode. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. In this case, there was a, a part where Brundle ran on the grid, but it was too short, so I didn't really put it in. If you mean actual bloopers, like the bloopers that I commit when recording, the way that I record it means that there are no bloopers because I just cut out the parts that don't work and I just use the parts that worked and I, I cut the, the wrong parts out and I just have one single file where it's just the part where I say the line right. So any mistakes I made are lost, unfortunately, so don't really look forward to a bloopers video in the future, unless I, for some reason, decide to change the way I record. And it's Stephen Curry is pronounced Steph like Stephanie. His full name is said Stephen. That doesn't really make sense. Stephen Curry. I mean, for example, I usually hear it's Stephen Colbert, and also I know it sounds it sound like I said Stephen, but it's really was my, it was really my accent blame my 17 accents for that. And lastly, hi Matt, I really love your videos. My question is, what is your favorite F1 conspiracy theory? My favorite conspiracy theory is that they changed the tire rule in 2005 to make Schumacher stop winning. As you all know, they had that rule where they prohibited tire changes, which I 
admittedly think that it was, it was stupid. I said in the USA 2005 video, but yeah, it was incredibly stupid. And one of the problems that stemmed from that was the USA race, uh, where only six cars started with the Brits, the Bridgestone team started. And in Europe 2005, where Kimi Raikkonen blew his suspension on the last lap because he had a flat spot coming out of the pits one, one time before, the, earlier in the race, I mean. So yeah, I read this one time that they changed the tire rule just to make Schumacher stop winning because everybody was sick of it. And I could see, I could actually see that happening because back, it was really bad. Schumacher was just winning all the, all the races and he had won five straight titles from 2000 to 2004. I could totally see them doing that. So yeah, this is it for the Q&A video. I hope you enjoyed the, the questions. I hope you enjoyed my answers. And there, if you want me to answer any more questions, there I have an Ask FM. You can go, go to that and ask me more questions if you want. So this is pretty much it. Thank you all very much for watching and listening. I will see you on the next race.